Dimitri Bival versus Lyndon Arthur. 12 rounds in the 175-pound division for Bival's belt. This is on the undercard of Anthony Joshua Adewale in that stacked, massive card out in Saudi Arabia, December 23rd. Let's get into it. Let's start with the champ, Dimitri Bival. 21 wins, no losses, 11 wins by way of knockout. You know, Bivol has been a champion now for a while now, man. Uh, going back to 2017 when he stopped Trent Broadhurst in the first round and he got the title then. He's defended his title against um, Sullivan Barrera, uh, Isaac Chimbale, Gene Pascal, Joe Smith Jr., Lennon Castillo, Craig Richards, Umar Salamov, Canelo Alvarez, and most recently, uh, Zerto Ramirez. That's not a bad list right there when you think about it, man. But with all of those fights, he didn't quite step into the spotlight or I guess gain more of a presence until he fought Canelo Alvarez, right? Obviously, we know how big Canelo's name is, not just in North America, not just in South America, but from a global standpoint, the man is a very popular draw. He's a big draw across the globe. And it wasn't until he beat Canelo that people say, wait a minute, Let's pay a little bit more attention to this guy. It's very hard to beat Bival for many reasons. Man, he puts together great combinations. He's got a strong, smart IQ, uh, great footwork, right? Knows how to control the range, keep separation. And among all of those things, man, he's very disciplined. Defensively, he's solid as well, too. And it's not that he doesn't get hit. He just knows how to make the right corrections. And if he's getting hit in one round, the next round, he's going to step back, reset, create separation. And if that's what it's going to take for him to win the fight, that's what he is going to do. Very disciplined in the sense of, I'm going to make sure that I'm not in trouble but I can still find a way to dominate and win this fight. He's also not afraid to pick up the pace, pick up the tempo and let his hands go if need be. When Bival punches, man, he's he, he can punch in six, seven piece combinations at will, not afraid to do it, but he is smart enough to know I have to adjust to the fight and the best way to win this fight that's what I have to do to win it. And he's going to make the right adjustments and he's going to be disciplined in doing that in order to win the fight. And Bival, man, he, 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 he keeps you busy with combinations and flurries. Against Zerto, he, he was hitting Zerto with so many consistent shots and combinations throughout the fight that Zerto did not really know what to do, right? There was a sequence where Bival landed a six-piece combination and Zerto was pulling back, hand in front, trying to get out of the way. And Bival hit him six clean times with every single shot. Bival had Zerto on the ropes at one point. And, you know, sometimes when a fighter has, an, has his opponent on the ropes, they're going to dive in and swing at will and sometimes smother their work and sometimes leave themselves open to being countered because they're overly aggressive. But against uh, uh, Zerto, man, there was a part where Bival just had that hand like this, right? Timing it, timing it, and then boom, put that hand forward, boom, it's calculated. Everything Bival does that I've seen of him to date is calculated and you mix that with the fact how quick his hands are and the risk that he's willing to take and will do makes for a deadly deadly combinations man i think right now bival is in his prime um i think he's fighting his best fights right now i think every fight that i've seen of him he's picked it up just a little bit and against zerda ramirez Zerda was supposed to come in and impose his will, his size, and be the bigger fighter. But when the fight started on that night, it was Bival who was pressing the pace, and he was the one that was looking more of the bigger fighter. Bival didn't take a lot of punishment that fight. He gave out a lot, but he didn't take a lot. To me, he did whatever he wanted to against Zerto in that fight. And I thought he looked really good in his last outing. And that's going to carry over into this weekend. But let's talk about his opponent, Lyndon Arthur. 23 wins, one loss, 16 wins by way of knockout. How do we feel about Lyndon Arthur? All my UK people, man, what do you think? Give me your thoughts on him below. Tell me a little bit more about your country, man. What do you think? I think Lyndon Arthur is very talented. I think he can punch. I think he's got skills. I think he's got good timing. He showed that when he fought Anthony Yard, right? 
in the first fight. But after he got stopped in the second fight against Anthony Yard, the level of competition to me and slight motivation and the direction to me seems to have taken a step backwards, in my opinion. After his loss to Anthony Yard, he fought Walter Sakira, um, a guy with a 28, 11, and 1 record, and he stopped him in six rounds. Not mad at that fight. When you lose a fight, you want to make sure you get back into that win column as quickly as you can, just from a mental standpoint. After that, he fought Joel McKintry, a guy with a 20 and 8 record. Arthur stopped him in two. After that, he fought Boris Crichton, who was kind of tricky, kind of awkward, 12 and 4 record, but he won that fight by decision. In his most recent fight, he fought Brian Suarez, who rose to the occasion on the night and gave Arthur a harder fight than he probably wanted to have against Suarez, who did look like the bigger fighter. I thought, if my memory serves me correctly, he missed weight that fight, right? So, but we know he's a pressure fighter, right? He was coming forward and Arthur just pushed that jab through, keeping that range and slipping shots to the body here and there. But for the most part, for the first three rounds, it was just Arthur keeping the range with just the jab. Boom, putting the range out. Boom, putting the range out. Not a lot of combinations behind it. It was Suarez coming forward, letting his hands go a little bit more and trying to close the gap in the early part of that fight. Before the round stopped in the fourth round, Suarez seemed like he was figuring out some of the timing that Arthur was trying to do and had been doing. And he timed Arthur beautifully with a beautiful, sharp, right hand shot that Arthur was trying to land an uppercut inside and he got caught slipping and he got dropped and put to the canvas. He got caught clean with the right hand that hit him cleanly. He was on a canvas. And luckily for him, when he got dropped and got back up, the round finished. And you would have thought that Arthur was going to come out the next round a bit more aggressive, pressing the matter a little bit more, but he didn't really do that. Right, He just went back to doing the same thing. And I'm thinking to myself, man, you got to pick up the urgency here. You got to let your hands go a little bit more because you're not winning this fight. You just been jabbing. He's at least been pressing the pace, letting the hands go a little bit more. So I'm looking for a more fired up, a more motivated Lyndon Arthur. But I didn't really see that. It wasn't until the ninth round that he started to take a little bit more risks. But it still was not as much as I would like to have seen in him because he wasn't winning the fight and the rounds were starting to get away from him. Now, in that 10th round, Arthur put together a two-piece clean body shot that landed cleanly. Would I say it had a lot of steam on them? Not that I could see, but you know, it doesn't matter what I think. Obviously, it had to have heard for Suarez to be down and moving the way how he was, but it was those body shots that he landed in the early rounds that seemed to pay dividends in the latter rounds and that's how he won that fight but i gotta say man personally i didn't think it was a very good performance i didn't think he looked good in that fight i think he looked a little unmotivated throughout the fight for me maybe he had some things going on and he did get the win but for me i was not impressed with that performance i didn't feel good about that performance for him going into his fight against the champion who has looked great in his last two fights really great in his last two fights so it's going to take a lot for him to climb this mountain and overtake the champion if he isn't motivated to become a champion and believes that he can win he obviously believes he can win i'm just saying from the performances it didn't quite look like that for me so who wins if arthur looks like he did in his last fight against bivol i think bivol is gonna put the hammer on him man put the hands on him and he might even get a stoppage by some form right lyndon arthur is fighting in a shell right now to me man he's fighting in a comfortable zone and if you are coming in and trying to comfortably win a fight and doing the bare minimum and not really taking too many risks it's going to be hard to make it an uncomfortable fight for dimitri Bavall. you got to make him uncomfortable and you got to take the risk and you have to gain his respect what happens if Bival does not respect the power of Arthur. He's going to press the pace a little bit more. I think it's going to be tough to beat Dimitri Bival. So I have Dimitri Bival winning this fight by decision. What are your thoughts on this fight? Who do you have winning this one? Let me know in the comment section below. If you'd like to support the channel, there's a couple ways you can do so. You can like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. 
If you'd like to support by way of donation, you can find options in the description below. Also, my Cash App handle will be on screen as well. Any amount goes towards the growth of this channel. It will be greatly, greatly appreciated. Shout out to everybody that continues to like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. I appreciate each of you. I don't always get to do all the suggested videos you guys suggest in the comment section below, but if you become a member, those suggested videos rise to the top and I will do my best to get those done for you. Or if you'd like to become a member just to support the channel, that would be greatly, greatly appreciated as well. Shout out to everybody that continues to like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel, man. I appreciate each of you. So with all that being said, if you've been watching the video, this don't do me a favor and subscribe to the channel. And we'll definitely see you next time.